Hello YouTube, welcome to Snapcast episode 5. Today we're going to be covering Sandy Crater by Bloodshot12, as well as our very own Shades Master, who's also the author of the Ethereal Shard series, uh, as well as Scooby Doom and a whole bunch of other good fun maps. How you doing Shades, man? I'm good, I'm good. How about you? Great, I'm glad you could be here. Also, we're joined Thanks. by... Z uh, the author of Devil City Ransom, Break Like the Wind, and uh, the man from the the far north. Uh, give it up for Z-Manzilla. How you doing, buddy? Finally, I get the mention of the FARC map. How you doing? <laughs> <laughs> Great. I'm glad you could be here. Also, we got uh, the author of Terragrithius Chamber, as well as Fatal Silence, the, the series. Uh... <laughs> and uh, oh, Devil May man. Doomed. I'm talking about Justin. How you doing, man? I wonder if I will make a Fatal Silence Part 3. I've been debating it for a while. Hey, oh, hi, how you doing? <laughs> <laughs> Great. I'm glad you could be here. <laughs> oh, doing pretty good. Last but not least, we got the author of the spotlighted map, Resurrected, as well as the Snapcast featured Golgotha and I'm gonna be uh you know promoting the <laughs> like a little self promotion there for the Snapcast. Uh I'm talking about the author Spindle Shanks who's actually been going back and uh, doing some updates, giving his old maps a new paint job as I noticed. How you doing Spindle Shanks? Doing good. What's up guys? Glad to be here with you. I'm glad you could make it. Hey, how's it going? So now we're all diving into Sandy Crater. Sandy Crater. Oh, man. Is this based off of, like... Is this, like, an original concept level, or is this based off of, like, a classic level that I'm not aware of? Nah, it's an original level. It's original funny, because, again, yeah. Heretic... Yeah, Heretic had a map called The Crater, E2M1, but it's not based on that. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Gotcha. Part of me wonders if it was just, like, a, a little bit of a, a tongue-in-cheek dirty joke, you know? Like... You know, Sandy Crater. <laughs> Your mom's got a Sandy Crater. I ironically would describe anybody that thought that joke was offensive, so. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, man. It's Sandy's force. It. It's great. It gets everywhere, you know? Get the sand out of your crater, man. I hate sand. It gets everywhere. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Alright. Ooh, I like that music transition. I always love when authors do that. Oh, yeah. man. I'm also a big fan of the high in, uh, the high insertion thing that's going on with this first level here. Yes. You know, like, and, and of course, using using the rocks to mask the the hard edges of the yeah of the of the um, uh, of the blocking volumes to make them look more like you know actual cliff faces is really a good job over here. Oh, uh, yeah. The one shot has always been good with his decorations. I mean, really, artistically, this is just, I mean, like you oh, said, yeah. it's just a rocks on the wall. I mean, there's depth, the verticality. It's just, it's, it's a beautiful map. Yeah, and it's, it, it also is taking really good advantage of the size of the grid room by, you know, allowing these, like, long-distance sort of shootout sessions to happen, you know? It's the same thing. Every, like, enemy encounter is used along with, like, um, the way the map looks and feels as well, and it flows, like, very yeah. well, I think. Yeah. I like it, too. In fact, I, I picked up a lot of my custom, my own custom geo and decal tricks from learning from, like, what he did with his. So, like, those rock faces it became, like, a go-to method. Like, okay, I'll plaster, like, rocks around, I mean, to make the mask the uh, hard edges, I'll use the decals over that. And I learned also that you have to have the rocks as solid or else the decals won't show. It must have been at the point of releases where I was learning those kind of things, probably. And then I just went back and enhanced my existing maps. The only thing I'll say about this... I'll continue. Oh. oh, sorry. There's only one thing I'll say about this. Is like, oh, I mean, it's not a big deal, but, you know, a crater is more like a sloping shape. It could have been done, whereas, you know, the way it is right now, it's almost like you could make this in, like old school doom engine like it would just be like you know the 90 degree from the ground wall 
Whereas, you know, I would if I were to redo this map, I would add more of like a try to make more of a crater shape. But it would still be a challenge to keep the player from going to, you know out of bounds. I'd, I'd probably make like ditch the stuff inside the crater, but well, you, you wouldn't need that sure. much. You wouldn't need that much lean to it. 10, 15 degrees tops, and you, the player still couldn't yeah. scale that. I mean, you know, just because it's a Bethesda game, it isn't one of those Bethesda games, you know? Yeah, that's, oh, that's, yeah. that is very true. <laughs> so, yeah, well, you know, I love, I love how Hell Knights act with Custom Geo. <laughs> like, I don't know if you saw I the don't. one earlier where he was like, like pulling his torso to the side, like, what's over there? Yeah. Uh, yeah, there was a map, uh, 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 Watts uh, made at one point. It, it, Watts is a huge. I'm a huge fan of Watts' this Oh, me too. As well, but he yeah. uh, he had one of his maps. He had a like a laboratory up at the top of this huge vertical build, and in his original version of it, he had a Hell Knight up there. And I was like, "What are you doing? <laughs> Hell Knights are the worst at being on top of, of a little slow down uh, right here of custom geo. Yeah, you can tell it's uh, before it was before that update." either before that update uh, where that crap started happening or it was after the update and Bloodshot just didn't care. Because so, <laughs> do it, doing, doing it the way that doesn't cause freezes takes like twice as long and make, it uses more resources. So. Oh, I like the, I like the little, I, I know what those lights are supposed to represent. That's, that's yeah. nice. Yeah. I love those lights. I love how he has, it made the light like bluish instead of like yellow. Like, like yeah. 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 Even all the rafters in the cave, it really gives it that, you know, like, you feel like you're in a damn mine or something. You know, it reminds me yeah, a lot yeah. of uh, Red Faction. You guys ever play that game? Wow. I, I was I played it. Red Faction, yeah. yes. Yeah, like the original Red Faction where you're trying to escape the mines. Uh -huh. <laughs> That's what this whole thing reminds me oh. of here. Real quick, I just want to say some really nice things about this jumping puzzle right here. Like... Like, I, I remember the first time I played this, and I won't lie, it messed me up a little bit, but um, I like that it, like, there's enough red herrings in the, the puzzle itself to, like, try to get you to do it wrong way the first time. I just, I enjoyed this part very much. Yeah, and this uh, area is just beautiful. beautiful. <laughs> yeah, everything from the jumping puzzle itself to the decal work is just uh, superb. I definitely yeah, remember, it like, worked well. Oh, yeah. But yeah, I definitely remember personally when, because I haven't played this in like two years, but I remember the first time I saw this, I was like, whoa, I've never seen anything like this before. Yeah. Really neat. <laughs> like, yeah, no, yeah, that lava, the lava looks like lava. It's yeah, really it does. Nice. You know, like, like, <laughs> it's not like a solid red color and it's like, oh, that's yeah. lava, okay. Yeah, I'm no, like, it, looks, it looks like the lava from the campaign if you don't look yeah. too hard at it, you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's one of, one of the yeah, best. It's custom really nice so. decal work, but it, I mean, every like so, yeah. like there's, there's so much going on in tandem in there. The decal work, the lighting work, the you know, the, the the placement of, of 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 side rocks just so you know, and I, and, I and love of course the bridge itself. Yeah, exa the, the bridge is really my there. favorite part there too, and the, oh, and the crane. crane. I love the yeah. crane. Oh God, yes, yeah the, yeah, the crane build was just phenomenal. Yeah. The only the only drawback about this puzzle was that I think it was actually a bit more difficult when I was playtesting it and I actually couldn't do it. And this is before we released he released the map, so I was you know we're obviously in the same house, so I could just walk to his computer yeah. and test it. So it was actually really awesome. So the puzzle was actually even more difficult, but I couldn't I actually couldn't solve it. And I'm like, yeah, if you if you even though you could do it if you release this, people are gonna be turned off by this. So it's like just make that cliff a little bit easier to scale or something. So. It became. It was still yeah. tough, but it became, it became doable. So yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Your mother's do, balls. Do you hear that, Jr? <laughs> it's supposed to be doable now. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh man. As soon as he says that, pop right in the wall. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All hail the doability. Yeah. I I literally I was I literally at that at one point I knew how to do the puzzle, but I just couldn't reach the bridge even though I was jumping. It's like I was on the yeah. little ledge. So I'm like, is this the right way? Because I'm trying to jump to the bridge, but it required it almost like it should be a secret area kind of jump. So that's one of those progress things I have an issue about with some games. Even games like early games like Hexen where it's like, okay, why is the secret area the main progress practically? It should be just more straightforward. Yeah. So that's just one of my personal philosophies where maybe it shouldn't be that tough of a jumping puzzle. Even... Doom, Doom is generous mantling, but he really did his 
much as they could to make it hard. There isn't that yeah, much air. And, and the, there isn't that much air control in this game. We discuss the mantling is that the, the the campaign does a good job of adding visual language to that mantle. Oh yeah, flowers, the little green oh, yeah. flowers, the green which lights, is, which exactly. is missing from this one. And it, it, as a result, I do remember the very first time I did this puzzle. It took me like three times as long as it should have because. I was just like I, I could I could kind of see where I was supposed to go, but then I would get halfway through and just be like, okay, what am I? Is this really the right jump, or am I, like, it, like, like seriously? I, t I I tried that jump like three times and wasn't able to get it. So um, yeah, Doom isn't you know, known for its air control. It's not like Super Mario. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, it's it's got good mantling, but at the same time, it's if if you miss the mantle because of either your poor skill or because the um, it's meant to be especially tricky, um, then it, what helps is if you're backed up by some sort of visual language. And like I said, the, the main campaign uses the little green glows. Uh, this had nothing in the way of a visual language to help the player out. So I remember thinking that after missing it twice that I was just doing it wrong. And it turns out I was doing it right. I just wasn't making it. <laughs> yeah. All right. Yeah, I agree. Like put it like stick the like at the bottom sides of each bridge. Put like a green light there. Yeah. Maybe on the cliff where you're supposed to go for like a little electronic device with like a green light on. Then people are like hmm, maybe I should go there. Yeah. Yeah. That, yeah. that would have. Because anybody who's familiar with the yeah. campaign would be like, oh yeah, yeah, from the campaign. That's... Uh, there's a couple folks that do their maps like that. They're jumping puzzle maps. Like uh, Jr. I think you're one of them. I'm pretty sure the antivirus had the green marks in it in certain places. I could be wrong, but I do believe it did. Yeah. For... So I want to say that yeah, I want to say that um, antivirus was one of the maps that was using good visual language to indicate jumps. Ah. But anyway, we're back to the action here. Oh man, <laughs> I, lo I love I love I love Doom's action so much. I can watch this stuff for hours, man. <laughs> oh my god, I love it so much. <laughs> what I'm trying to figure out is is, is, is this a, is this a hey dude too. Module? Yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah. this room yeah. made is a, this is the only area in the map that's like a homage to an existing map. It's not the whole level; it's just this one room. But yeah, and there's a uh, there's a uh, uh -huh. Z man. Yeah, I, I I'm the one who put that in the Z. There's there's the Cretan. <laughs> the <Cretan. laughs> there's the Cretan reference. Which I'm amazed yeah. that all you did was put the word Cretan and didn't bother to like actually like make it a Cretan room. It's I got know. one blinking. I mean, light. I think there might be a point where it does change, but it's only it's not like uh -huh. it's super. It's not like a radical or anything, but the yeah. it temporarily changes once. Yeah, like, no. Yeah, it does. <laughs> what is it? Yeah, there it is. There's okay, the environmental. Cool. Yeah, yep, yeah. It's proper green. <laughs> now you got the environmental. Geo, because this is a uh, like sixty. This is like I think sixty-four units or one twenty-eight units off the ground. Is uh -huh. this is actually not the solid floor? So he actually works on it. It's crazy. So that's, yeah, that's what's weird about this. Like, he's standing on top of Custom Geo. The floor you're on is not, you know, it's not the actual floor floor. It's a Custom Geo. But he can still right. navigate because it's low enough, yeah. Yeah. Oh, is that true? Yeah, as long as, yeah. As, long as they're low enough. And uh, also, if I'm not mistaken, you have to set the ground so that it doesn't block enemy sight. So that they mm -hmm. can still see the, uh, that way they can still see the, uh, uh, the navigation grid. The nav mesh, and actually, if you huh. look at the nav mesh, it floats a little bit above the ground anyway. So, huh. yeah, so you can. There's Dang. a certain amount of height you can get away with, and they'll walk on it. Or in some cases, uh, I've noticed that uh, pinkies and um, pinkies and and hell knights sometimes their feet will fall through it. But, really, um, they'll still walk on it. It's just it'll look like they're wading through like, you know, gook or something. Hmm. Yeah. But they'll still yeah, walk on it. Slime, but if it's yeah. like supposed to be like a metal floor, then yeah, yeah. God, I'll never forget the first time I thought I could make enemies to walk on Custom Geo and how wrong I was. Uh -huh. I had to redo yeah. a whole map just because of that. I was like, no! <laughs> <laughs> we should redo this map and wait. Because, you know, as I said before, I have, we have that Quake with Bloodshot and I have that Quake mod, Slayer's Testaments. We can, because we're using a texture set, not just classic textures, but textures that look like 2016 and Eternal. So we can literally remake this map as part of the proper campaign in Slayer's Testaments. He already has the first level of the regular campaign, like, done. Like, the June 2016, that level, mm -hmm. we have that going on in Slayer's Testaments in Quake, in the Quake engine. Really? The, the UAC can, level? Yep, and enemies can oh. certainly they certainly can walk on any 
custom geo you make because it's it's brushwork. It's you know it's not like a fake custom geo like this is. I'm not dissing. I'm just saying it's like you know for what it is, that map is great, but you know. Well, I think it's level editors that could, they they off where they everywhere. Yeah. I, I swear I end up saying this like this this line ends up coming up every single one of our. Uh, uh, of our snap uh, snapcasts, but um, yeah, it's it's it is a Fisher Price dev kit. But I mean, what that means is there there's a, there's a lot of stuff that they're not going directly into, you know. And when you're dealing with uh, like more advanced modding tools designed for people who like know their shit on a computer versus Snap Map, which was designed for people who like this could be their very first exposure to programming ever. You're not yeah. going to throw advanced, you know, pathfinding and yeah. world, cre you know, world creating at folks who are just kind of like, you know, I want to put 12 cyber, cyber demons in it, you know? Yeah, like, <laughs> yeah exactly. Yeah, I love that term. Um, it's actually very easy to use. It's a lot like Snap Map in a lot of ways. And I was is, actually yeah. Gonna, yeah, I was going to actually ask you, Shades Master, um, you can edit like the Slayer's Testament stuff in French Boom, probably, right? Yep, exactly. So if you're ever game to make a map, you can, we, we have the stuff released already, so you can always, you know, we have texture sets. I have a texture set I made that was classic textures plus edits that people made in the community. We have that. We have we're using some Doom Three textures, but the ones that look like the white collar ones in Doom Twenty Sixteen. So it's just a matter of how you use it. But yes, I we I don't use French Boom to right? make it. Wait, what? Oh, yeah, so all those mods are up already, right? Yes. Yeah, we have the. I have a seven level campaign for Slayer's Testaments already up. Like that's based off of a thing called YPOD that came out in the nineties. That was the first time Doom was in three D because it put Doom in Quake Engine, but I did Eternal Path of Destruction as kind of a homage to that. So it has original maps that have some remixes of the YPOD maps. Oh, that was a purposeful it. choice. And some remixes of classic Doom maps as well, and plus original maps. Yeah, but yeah, what's that? Oh, you mean why, Eternal Path, or are you talking about YPOD? Um, um, no, the play is Testament. I already played. Oh, cool, cool. Um, I wonder yeah. what version you played. Because I have oh, a no. seven level campaign. I had a version that was only four levels long. You might have played that one. I don't know. The seven one I played. Oh, cool. Nice. Yeah. Yeah, it was, it was fantastic. I, I mean, I knew while I was playing Bloodshot's work also, annual work. So that really also showed, like, it really showed through a lot. Cool. Yeah. Thanks. I appreciate it. But yeah. But that, what you're saying before is how Trench Broom is similar to, in, in some aspects, easier than Snap Map, like with, you know, getting enemies to work on custom geo. It's true because level design principles apply. Like, okay, you want to make progress where people know where they're going. You want to have a good level layout. And especially if you're custom geoing and snap map, that definitely applies as well. So it's a lot of the same principles transfer over. So if you make a level, if you make a good custom geo level in snap map, you can definitely learn how to do it in other editors, for sure. Especially things that are like the newer ones, like French Broom. Like I always tell people, like, try it out. It's not like it was back in the 90s. Like, these things are very accessible. You get really easy to use, and the limits. I mean, you know, it's old. It's a Quake engine, but it's the things you can do are pretty impressive. <laughs> yeah, the, and there's like the limits were, but that were back in the day are nearly as much. Like Doom, Quake. It's like you had like your vis plane limit in Doom, and in Quake you had you just couldn't do much. To, and even Hexen too, a Quake engine game, because they had to have all the information because of the hub. Those levels had to be really tiny, but no longer. You actually make big Hex and 2 level maps now, which is crazy. You know, like the you know what else is... Dimension maps and of the newer yeah. maps are just gigantic. Exactly. It's like, geez, <laughs> you have all this detail in big maps. And this is in Hex and 2 now, because they're using the same DSP2 format. So it's like, well, almost as big anyways. Oh, there's a weird... Are you trying to break the map? Uh, yeah, just yeah, pulled yeah. Justin. Yeah, you pulled the Justin. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, Justin. We the were goat. calling that a JR crash a long time ago. Uh, All right. no. I am the goat. <laughs> but it's a Justin. Oh, no. All no. right. In fact, I'm pretty sure crash actually made the official term for it, Billy Goating. Yes, yeah. I did. Billy Goating? <laughs> yeah. JR crash made that term. Yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say JR crash is the one that coined the term Billy Goating. Yeah. yeah. Billy Goating. Okay. Yeah. Oh, I, if I recall, I think I finished this outdoor area because in the center it wasn't the slime yet or it wasn't complete. So uh, that secret area, I actually finished it off. Like that's one of the areas I had to complete uh, from, actually complete for the map. Like this he really just, cool. some of the art, some of the stuff just ended. So I was like, what should I do with this? Oh, just make some slime. 
It's a go-to method now. <laughs> this is fully one shot. You're area famous again. for your uh, yeah. slime yeah. shades, master. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, 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 every level the trail of his slime. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Man, I'm such a sucker for lighting, dude. Yeah. Ugh. Yeah, this is a great job. All the geo is just top notch here. Yeah. It's it's crazy the bloodshot has uh like half of the uh spotlight maps. <laughs> yeah, like that, I don't know what like, he does. Yeah. I forgot about that. It's like if you're spotlighting multiple maps in a campaign, I, I'm not saying I want don't want him to be spotlit, but I just think it's kinda of silly. Shouldn't you spotlight the first one? I mean, they were just spotlighting every single map of his at one point. It was like it was it was almost ridiculous. It's like it's no. good. They deserve, but it's also ridiculous too. Correct me if I'm wrong, but didn't Bloodshot make the Fallen Icon map? Yeah, he made, yeah. A, he made one of the Icon of Sin maps for sure. There's a bunch out there, he made one of them, so yeah. Yes. Okay. The floor with a spare, that was like, I couldn't believe it when I first played that. That was just like... Oh, yes. Yeah. It was just yeah. like, uh, I was like, someone who made this... this that was actually a map that made it me feel like I could actually like, do more. It was like, well, if this is possible, maybe I could implement this, or it was just an amazing experience, and I was just like amazed that was actually made on Snap Map at the time, too, with like just the second update, I think. Third update, maybe? Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah, yeah when they added... Oh, yeah? Oh, you first, yeah. Oh, okay, cool. <laughs> no, what I was going to say was... When they added, like, custom geo, you know, because it, when when the game first came out, there was custom geo, but it was, like, only the solid block, and you could only change it, like, three different colors and whatnot. Yeah. But, like, when they added, like, the skyboxes and all the different textures and all that, and you started seeing, like, all those, like, custom geo builds start popping up, and it's just like, that's exactly what I was hoping for yeah. the longest time. And every time I play something new, like, I think what really blew me away was when Watsla recreated the Resident Evil 2 police station mm. in his um, campaign. And that that's when I was like, oh my god, wow. <laughs> Going back and check, checking out the whole reality bending series is just such a great... I know. I mean, every, every single episode of that is so much fun. Like, I mean, there's some of them that, uh, you know, it's a little weirder now, like the, uh -huh. the, 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 the Cancer Lot one. Like, you really have to... You really have to be super. You're either really have to be super savvy about your My Little Pony trivia knowledge, or <laughs> it's just going to be a, a a map about shooting up a school and like. Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. So yeah, that, that that that's a little okey, but <laughs> other yeah. than that, like yeah. the, the the reality bending series is uh, phenomenal. Yeah, there, Doom has a pretty dark history with. Uh, that being associate those associated maps people make about their schools and such. Yeah. Going way I back. Mean, and, 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 and like with Watts, the, I don't even like I hold it against him, but like Busy Man, like who totally leaned into the school shooting simulator. Like, oh my goodness, I think that was the last map of his I ever played. <sighs> <laughs> but hey, as long as you're getting invaders and not the people who go to the places, I guess it's better. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> like I'm, we're the demon slayers, not the people slayers. That would, you know, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. No, it's, it's one of the reasons. That, one of the things I always said was like also about Doom was, you know, here's what's cool about it because the 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 bad guys are demons. That that's pretty unambiguous, you know. Yeah. Like, <laughs> I, I think some know, things are just in poor taste. Yeah, yeah. That's, <laughs> yeah. I, I think, and in fact, I think that was like one one of the uh, complaints I had that got misinterpreted by all the people that were like. Uh, that, that started thinking I was an SJW because I thought the, the <laughs> some of the humor from the first Doom Eternal trailer was corny. And yeah. Oh, yeah. And people thought I was, oh, you're just being an SJW. I was like, no, motherfucker, this shit's corny. You know? Like, <laughs> yeah. You, yeah. Demons are demons. They're unambiguously, I mean, they're, they're unambiguously evil, okay? Like, the fact that you want there to be a subplot about demons being immigrants says more about you than it does about the game, okay? Like... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you they're know. just trying to create a controversy so they can uh, get some free publicity, probably. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, the lights in this room are pretty... Like, the red yeah. lights in the ceiling that, are, that evoke the classic texture. I ended up using that in my levels a lot, but I got mm -hmm. that from here. 
Oh, then this room. I I made this room because he originally had nothing going on behind here. And I, well, and of course, I, like, you made this almost, room. It's covered in slime. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The other one was his though, but this the other oh. the other slime room we had to go in the pipe was actually his. But all the other slime areas in this map are mine. Uh -huh. So yeah. Slurm. Oh, kind of reminds Crash. me of Slurm yeah, from Hell. Future. Yeah, Roman. there you go. Oh. <laughs> this is the part I edit. What I happens if I uh? Limited resources left to do so. So I'm like, I gotta light the room. I gotta add the stuff, the encounters, and I'm running short of resources fast. And I still have to do a final encounter after this because this can't be it. You know, there's gotta be something climactic. Yeah. Do you still pick so up the mega health if you got so full health and armor? I'm sure had it already, like, that it happened, but after this, mm -hmm. you go back to the beginning of the level, and then that's where the final encounter is. And unless I lock the player to single player, which, you know, I'm thinking more and more of that for now on we should. Yeah. Especially with, I was talking with Houston about it, yeah. Because, you know, maps yeah. are broken. If, if you screw up once, make it so the map's not co-op enabled, and then, he, and then he fixed it up, I think it's forever corrupted anyways. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. He, that's my biggest yeah, regret, that, man. I tried to shards that way. I should just make him slot to single player now. <laughs> I tried yeah, making co Psychotron oh, co-op yeah. and I yeah. failed. And I tried making Antivirus co-op and I failed at that. So I'm like, oh, screw yeah. it, man. <laughs> yeah. Because I remember, I think it was the day before or yesterday or whatever, Fidgeton was talking about how, like, you know, he was like, he was trying to make the new Doom Who uh, level like co-op. And I was just like, I think it's awesome that people still try to keep co-op in mind, but like for personal experience of playing co-op and like working with it, it's just not worth it anymore. Yeah. Like the multiplayer yeah. is so buggy and broken yeah. that for the sake of the creator and for anyone who's creating maps on Snap Map who see this, don't do co-op. Um, just don't. I would only and do it save if you, you so much time, and it will help you get your map out better. Unless you have okay. somebody in mind that you know wants is always down to play co-op with you, don't count on it. Oh, like, yeah. The lobby yeah, system that, sucks. That, I was about to say the same thing. Where I'm like, okay, if you got a friend that you can play co-op with, uh, and, and you and him, like you and that other friend, you have some things you like or whatever, mm -hmm. you can build a map just for them. That's awesome. You that's know? awesome. Yeah. That's. Always, it's always awesome to try to play with your friends, you know. Oh god, yeah. yeah. But um, generally speaking, though, yeah, like co-op scene is dead. In fact, multiplayer in general, I've only made what two multiplayer maps, and I don't plan on making any more if I can help it. Yeah, yeah. Same Which here, sucks man. because I've played both of those maps, and they're really fun and they're awesome. It's just because of the way, because of how janky Snap Map is. I try mm -hmm. playing that with a buddy, and yeah. if you're the second player, uh, yeah. Sorry, but you're not going to be able to play, and that sucks because I played your multiplayer maps, and they're really awesome. And uh, one thing I've noticed yeah, is that yeah. when people play co a map co-op, you know, they're a lot more uh, they're a lot more kind when they're rating it because the players entertain each other. So, but when you're playing single player, your sole focus is on the map, so the map has to deliver all the entertainment. But in co-op mode. You know, whoever you're playing with, you know, people can entertain each other. So even if the map's kind of kind of lame, you know, it's not perfect, they might not notice because they're just having such a fun time playing, you know. Just something I've noticed. Uh, that's, you know, that's, that's a fair point. My counterpoint to that, though, is that I've seen you play co-op maps, and, all it, all, and in some cases what that can also end up as is now you have two people making fun of your map instead of one. <laughs> <laughs> And they they, they yeah. rip off of one another. <laughs> like, oh yeah. Well, yeah. well, let me tell you this: if we ever do end up covering Terra Grithius Chamber, one of y'all's got to have to play oh, co-op with me because I'm not doing that by myself. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. I would do it for you, but I, I I'd make it too easy on you, and I don't want that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I just don't want to get arthritis sure. at, at my age. <laughs> In my hands. Oh, yeah. I'm still <laughs> evil about that, <laughs> and I always will be. <laughs> uh -huh. Nah, yes. Yeah. Going back like, to co-op, even if it fully worked, there's still things you have to worry about in co-op that you wouldn't otherwise. Such yeah. as, like, okay, you you enclose a player in a single player in an area, you don't have to worry about the other how to get the other people to teleport in and stuff. Whereas, you know, in co-op, you just have to have more consideration like that. So even yeah. if it fully worked, it's just easier to focus on single player. Solving. Yeah. Well, the worst yeah. thing is trying to test it out while you're building it because then what yeah. you got to you got to wait in the lobby for somebody to p potentially play a broken map. You know, it's 
it's it's not fair for anybody yeah. you know yeah or no, that's why like when i was whenever i was de- designing like multiplayer stuff i was that was at the time when i was still talking to void runner regularly and also um psycho knight would help me out with my multiplayer stuff like psycho knight was a Almost huge help when 10. i was working on uh when i was working on slave Alt. so i would love to get psycho on here that would be a blast as oh, well oh yeah Mm-hmm. He's a, God. He's such. I love that guy. He's a trip. <laughs> he's a trip. Hey man, invite him on. There's room. I think we can. I think uh, Discord can support up to nine. But man, it's it, it, it'd be like a, a busy CNN panel with everyone talking over each other though at a certain point. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, <agreed. laughs> Tell me everything yeah. you like about the map in two seconds. Everybody answer at once. Go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh boy. So yeah, that was Sandy Crater. All right by uh shades great and, map great great great, great and map. it sucks because yeah. i was talking about this earlier before Bloodshot. we were recording is that oh wait what crash did you say no I, I just for a second there i couldn't oh. remember bloodshot 12's name i'm like bloody blood blood oh, blood man no. <laughs> no but what i was gonna say was like i wish i had a lot more to say because uh, to be honest with you, the last time i played this map was two years ago and usually when I, you know, usually before we do these episodes, like when I'm in them, I always make sure to play it just so that way I can kind of get refreshed on what it is. Right. Um, mm-hmm. And even though I didn't have a lot to say, I will say that uh, this is one of the, I think this was one of the first maps experience that I saw that had like the lava decals and all that kind of stuff and the way mm-hmm. it looked the lighting and all that. And man, I gotta say it, it, it lives up. It's really good. I love this map. It's it's a classic for me, even though I haven't played it like in two years, and I don't remember much of it. But I love that room with the lava. That that is the mm-hmm. highlight uh, of the room, and that is definitely going to be the thumbnail for this. Let me tell you, I already got it. I already got it. The oh, you got it. Because I just love it so <laughs> it's much. Gotta be. It's like <laughs> the most iconic thing. Yeah. Oh yeah. It's great. But yeah. yeah. Would you say it's perfect? Um, um, no, I wouldn't say it's perfect, but I will definitely say that it is a definitely good, solid build, and anyone can pick that up and have fun with it, for sure. That jumping puzzle, that's the main, that that would be my main complaint, honestly, that jumping puzzle with the lack of indications and stuff, yeah. it all boils down to your personal philosophy, I guess, but I think it's good to say that it, there should be, like, the green lights or, like, a visual, more of a visual clue. That maybe I should have added it myself when I was finishing up the map. I didn't think to do so for some super reason. Mm-hmm. So well, yeah. One of the, one of the things to keep in mind is when you're actually when you're in the middle of building the map yourself, you know you already know what everything is supposed to be and you know how to do everything. You you need to be told by somebody that doesn't know that people don't know about that. Exactly. You don't you 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 know what you know and you don't know what other people don't know. So <laughs> so when you make a map, yeah, because when you make a map. And Z-Man taught me this uh, really, really well. Uh, and I've always, to this day, have tried to keep it in my mind. Is that when you when you make a map, you have to put your mind outside of yourself, and you have to try to put it in the shoes of like someone who's never really played a Doom game before a snap map whatsoever. So you kind of you kind of have to think like that and try to be kind of like dumb and try to like get through weird decisions and all that kind of stuff because (laughs) when you do that you make the map way more uh harder to break and you make it a lot more easier to be coherent uh, and whatnot and that and uh um pois are also a really really great example of like you know showing a player hey you know attention to this and whatnot but i would say the lights is definitely a way better um, thing to do that, especially with jumpy puzzles, because yeah. the campaign yeah. did that perfectly. <laughs> yeah, so especially since I was the one playtesting and I literally got really badly stuck there in the initial version. I forgot. I know. I forgot how it was different. I think maybe something was farther apart, or the ladder wasn't as tall, or something. But I could barely even reach the bridge. Like when you jump from the ledge to the bridge, I'm like, I don't even know that was the right way. So right. I was a playtester, and I should have suggested then, but for some reason, I don't know why, I never. Mm-hmm. Even then, if I were to go back to it, I'd probably just make that not only adding the lights, I'd just make it a tad bit easier too. Oh yeah, there's right. a. I'm reminded of a joke that goes around uh, programming circles. Uh, so, uh, a programmer walks into a bar. He orders one beer. He orders ten beers. He orders eight million four thousand seven hundred twenty-seven beers. He orders negative five beers. He orders okay. walrus beers. 
He orders every single kind of beer he can possibly think of that a person could possibly do. Satisfied, he opens up the bar. The first customer comes in and asks where the bathroom is. The bar explodes. Huh. I get it. Yeah. Because <laughs> you will t- you will design and you will test and you will test and you will think you've gotten every eventuality. Exactly. And then freaking uh, Psycho Knight's going to make a video of himself crashing it five minutes in. <laughs> yeah. Oh, uh, God. I, it's funny because like, I can relate to that joke in person, not like personally, yeah. way too much. Yeah. It's just like, oh! <laughs> Because that, because like that happened to me with hell too, where I had I had the the one room where you're supposed to swing from the swings, right? Mm. And I made like an explosion happen on like the pillars and whatnot, and people are like, "What? What do I do?" And I'm like, "Oh no, are people getting stuck there?" So, oh, mm. I felt so bad. So I had to go in and put POIs there saying swing, climb, and stuff, and I'm like, "Oh yeah. no, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah." <laughs> Oh, I should have thought. Yeah. But I feel bad for retail releases are like that. Like, Hexen is a big one. I remember the years back when I played the first time, it was like, uh, what does this Switch do? It had no indication in the game as to what the Switch did. It said one-third of the puzzle has been solved. I'm thinking to myself, what puzzle? But all it is is you just have to find three of those for anything to happen. That's all it meant, but I didn't know that at the time. So it's similar to your map, but it was actually an official retail game. Yeah. Like, okay, I'm, I'm stuck. Yeah. I don't know why. It's, you don't need to be – it doesn't need to be this yeah. hard. <laughs> oh, you, you know what's terrible for that is uh, Strife. I, 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 I picked yeah. up Strife when it was on a Steam sale, and oh, my God, that thing is terrible at telling you what you're supposed to be doing. <laughs> Uh, Maybe we uh, should get to yeah, our uh, final in thoughts here. I can stay in the nineties. <laughs> I yeah. like one should have could, should have some kind of if you want to evoke the best of the nineties, you get your kind of cir- circular level design, circuit like, but lab- labyrinth but not too much of a labyrinth, just enough to be interesting. Uh-huh. And you but you always know where you're going, and you feel like you're exploring. You don't feel like you're stuck. You actually feel like you're exploring. So oh, yeah. if you want to progress, you can progress. But if you want to explore a side area, that's fine too. Yeah. It just makes the feel bigger, even if it's not so yeah. much larger. All right, let's uh, let's sorry, let's uh let, let, let's let, let's run through our final thoughts here. <laughs> okay. Oh, yeah. We're a little over all over the place here. <laughs> uh, that's okay. Uh, Spindle Shanks, what did you think about Sandy Crater? Um, first off, it's as soon as you start, you start in the Sandy Crater, which is like very odd for a map to actually be named what it actually like as featured. Then after that, you know, like everyone else touched, it was just visually, it's a beautiful map. I mean, Bloodshot really, I haven't really played a map of one of his where I didn't either see something I didn't like or I need to learn something. Like, I, you could just play the map and every encounter is like, it just seems very well positioned, well thought out. It seems fair, but yet challenging. There's just... It's just like, like you say, the 90s before, it just feels like a very a throwback map to like, like Quake 2, where sometimes you aren't sure what you have to do. You know what way you got to go, but he doesn't really tell you. Some people don't like that. I kind of still have like a love for that, where I just like kind of like rack my brain around what to do, how to do that puzzle. But then when you find it out, I don't know, I feel like I achieved something. But I mean, even visually, like the lighting, the textures, the decals, the brushwork, everything he did is just, I think, you know he's got experience and just great design, a great eye for it. I mean, I could just go on forever about this map and like the rest of his maps, but I'll just basically say a little bit. The only reason I don't think it's perfect, though, is because Snap Map has its flaws. Otherwise, I think if Snap Map was just a better tool, I bet this map would be near perfect. Oh, yeah. Pretty much my final yeah. Point. So, since Shades is here, I want to take advantage of some inside knowledge. So, uh, Bloodshot's your brother. Uh, does he have an actual background in any kind of graphic design or uh, any kind of art artistic background? Why is he so good? Oh, well, it's just basically like it, it just practice, really, what it comes down to. His job is actually his actual day job, I guess is just, you know, like, doing, like, network stuff at a hospital. Not, not quite IT, but he does that kind of thing. But here's the thing. It's like, 
both of us have been modding games for years. Like myself, I made le- I was guilty of making levels back in the day, not releasing it. So I used the old, really old Doom editors like DEU, HEU for Heretic, where it had no 3D views or anything like that. But the results were kind of bland. So speaking from where I'm coming from, it's the same deal with him, where it's like, okay, we practiced, we had some stuff that was decent, a lot of stuff we never released. And just as time went on, we reached a certain threshold where we we felt we became good enough and we finished stuff to, you know, get it out there. So, and and he also, he, unlike myself, he's better at programming too. So that's a really huge thing with, with modding as well, which is why we could do, uh, let's see, he could do Quake C stuff. We can get monsters in the mod, which means if I provide models, we can make, literally make our own game. So currently, he's involved with a game called Wrath, Aeon of Ruin. He's a level designer in 3D Realms. As his part-time... See, he has a regular day job, but as a contracting gig, he's on there to make, like, two maps. Oh, right on. So he's working on... Yeah, so he's actually with 3D Realms currently for two levels for Aeon of Ruin. And not only that, but us, our family, we're going to do our own Quake Engine game as well. I can't really spill too many details. In fact, the one pick I showed you was probably too much already. But, yeah, it's been in the work for some time. But a lot of it was, like, the learning process of coding, especially for my brother. But with the Slayer's Testament mod, what, what I realized we actually have gameplay. We can literally do pull a, quote, quote, unquote, pull a heretic and pretty much re- have the models reskin with, you know, our own models and have, like, a wand in place of a pistol and this and that. We have gameplay. But we're going to do more original stuff, too. Okay, uh, Z Manzilla, what do you think about Sandy Crater? This map is super groovy, you know. Like, I mean, I, and I'm not just, you know, like I, like I, I, I want to, I want to be able just to, to say, you know, I'm not, I'm not kissing this map's butt just because they, they, they put a Cretan room in it with my, with, with a big old hint yes. pointing in my direction, <laughs> and, and, you know, <laughs> like that, that, that certainly is, is awesome, you know, like, and I love any map that does that, obviously, but. Um, <laughs> No, in all seriousness, uh, it, it really can't be understated just uh, what a great job was done with the visuals in this one. And the one thing you, you notice when you go back to think about it is, hey, I wasn't being told a story in that one. You, you, you Now, I, I have nothing against folks that are, are big into atmosphere and story. I, I completely get it. And I, I like it when people do that stuff. But personally, I've been, always been a bigger fan of the shut up and play model, you know, and mm-hmm. if there's, I always figure if there's going to be story, it should work its way organically into the gameplay, because Doom is very fast paced, you know, oh, yeah. um, but what's, the thing that's really striking about Sandy Crater, it, I there's no indication of a story, I mean, like, the, the, the environment almost just tells the story you want it to tell. Like, what is this place? Why is it here? Who right. cares? Shoot the demons, you know? <laughs> um, so, but, but at the same time, if you do stop and you think about it and all the, the areas you're wandering through, you're like, you probably could piece together a story of what this place does and what it was for, you know? Um, but you could, but you don't have to. It's, it's very, it's super optional. And that's one of the things I really respect about this. Uh, this nice tight focus on gameplay with, you know, the, the visual is there to serve whatever purpose you wanted to. To either make a pretty place to shoot out, or if you really want to fill in the blanks, you can do that too. Well, it's like uh, old John Carmack said, a story in a first-person shooter is just like a story in a porno. It's expected to be there somewhere, but it's not really important. (laughs) Okay, so Carmack said, the one thing I'm going to say in Romero's defense is that Quake 2 was far less interesting than Quake 1 because Romero wasn't there to help out with the story. Carmax, I can see now maybe why Romero started to try to distance himself from Carmack if that was Carmack's attitude. But, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, but you know what? I think the perfect balance, Doom 2016 gets that perfect balance of Romero and Carmack and their philosophy. Like, the story yeah. is there. I would agree it's with just that. Like you got to find it for yourself. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Oh, yeah. It doesn't, Doom, it doesn't force in your face, yeah. Oh yeah, and Doom Doom's lore, the new Doom's lore is so rich and just so amazing when you just mm-hmm. when you read it and it's like, "Oh my god, the amount yeah. I think what blows me away the most about Doom's lore is the fact that they went the extra mile to give lore to the power-ups oh, <laughs> of yeah. the game." 
And I was like, okay, that's, I respect that. That's great. And I love that. I mean, yeah. And the, the best, I, I really love the way that they worked it in, which was to make it a side thing. If you're really that interested, you can go off and do it. You don't exactly. need to. You know, I love that. I love yeah. that it's it's super rich and yet also optional. It's so perfect, you know? Mm-hmm. Shades that Master. Is the, Shades the most master. respectful way they could have done it. Shades Master. Boom, and that hits, the, that hits the nail on the head because I think that's also in line with progression, how it should be like, you know, you should, it shouldn't be a convoluted progression. If it's like, if it's a, a, like a secret area, it should be a secret area in terms of progression. You shouldn't, the player shouldn't get stuck. It should be straightforward. You're, you're getting the monsters, you're, you're going from one area to the next. You feel like you're exploring if you want to explore. So that same philosophy that applies to the storytelling as well. And I think it's almost like a, it's almost like a, law of nature really like have if it's convoluted or complex complex it should be optional and people will love it yeah, i think it's always good to design it so that uh if someone just wants to turn their brain off and just shoot demons then they can do that but if somebody wants to get deep yeah. and go off if they want to take a trail through the bushes and learn about the lore and and do that other stuff then then it's available for the people who want to explore it Mm-hmm. But anyway, exactly. Shades, Shades Master, I want to get your uh, thoughts on this map, Sandy Crater. I know you said Bloodshot did most of the visuals and you filled in the action. Is there anything else you can tell us about this map that we wouldn't know just by playing it? Any kind of uh, behind-the-scenes stuff that happened in development? Uh, anything you can tell us about this map uh, that's, you know... Just from the well, author there? I'm trying to think because, un- unfortunately, like, I wasn't there for most of the development. Like, he did it on his own, and then I just came in at the end when he wasn't releasing it, and I just kind of swooped in and just helped push him the rest of the way. Under his profile, no less, too. I think I hopped on his computer. But, um, yeah, the main th- the main takeaway was that I had some custom geo things I ended up borrowing from, like, the Star Chan. Like, the, 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 panel, the wall panels you saw, I ended up elaborating on that and using that in my own maps and the same with the lights in the ceiling like the circular lights that evoked a classic texture so there is a fun, a, in other words a bunch of new tricks that I learned that propelled me to get better custom geo myself was because of this map in terms of uh, anything special or different about it, it it was like uh, I don't know I'm trying to remember back you just told about how he started this map I was like oh it's pretty cool All but right. I wasn't really involved with it until he lost inspiration really I gotcha so uh just any final thoughts about the map generally? It's really awesome, and it would be really great if it had like some kind of like re-release. Which you know, I, I'd be game to do that. But again, I have to go. I'd go into his. I mean, I mean, I couldn't re-save. I could save it on my own and just expand upon, make it single player only to get rid of the limits and just add more to it. I think the conclusion was kind of rushed. Yeah, that's the main thing too. Uh, the conclusion where you fought back in the main crater. In my opinion, that was kind of rushed, but again, I was running out of resources and they had to do something. So, what was it, six revenants, six barons, pretty much? Yeah, maybe a better ending. That's my main thought for the map as well. I could see where you get there. I mean, the the ending is sort of just a, a big monster mash, you know? <laughs> uh, I guess I'll do... Yeah, so... I guess I'll do my final thoughts, so... Yeah, yeah. I thought Sandy Crater was a fantastic map. Uh, visually, obviously, uh, Bloodshot 12 did a fantastic job with the custom geo. Um, you know, a picture tells a thousand words, and, and I know, Z-Man, you brought up the, the lack of a story, but um, like you, like you kind of said, like, uh, just the, sometimes the atmosphere tells the story by itself, just the way it looks, like... Y- y- you don't really need a story. It's just uh, yeah. the atmosphere is so rich, it just sort of creates its own story just by you being there. And that's something mm-hmm. I like about you know this, when someone brings this level of, of, of skill and time into their custom geo, it just, the atmosphere just is so rich, it's, it's just fantastic. Also, uh, it's got the kind of gameplay I really enjoy, as in it's, it's well lit, it's not so dark, I can't see what I'm doing. It's well lit, and and there's space for me to maneuver. You know, I'm not getting stuck on, on like you know, little bits of geo hanging out here and like, you know, boxes and like. There's a lot of space. It's very opened up, which is something I really like. It's it's well lit and it's opened up, which is that's what I'm all about for combat and gameplay in the first person shooter. So I really enjoyed that. 
and it had its it had secrets um like there's a couple power-ups you can grab there's a, a core there's like a switch and uh, i actually didn't grab the power core that you need to get to one area i just sort of cheated and and billy goaded my way there <laughs> But uh, anyway, <laughs> there are secrets, so I appreciate the fact that the secrets existed. Um, one thing I didn't like is, like, so the one thing I'd say I didn't like is there's one sort of gank in this map where when, you, when you're jumping across that lava and you climb up on the ledge, uh, before you jump onto that middle section of the bridge that's sort of suspended there, uh, you spawn in one of those void floater cacodemons and it's like oh. it's really just a screw the player type situation because unless you did what I did because you you know you played it a couple of times before you recorded the video <laughs> and you know to just jump onto that platform yeah. real quick like if you just stay on that wall you're screwed you can't maneuver for shit unless you're gonna like risk jumping back into the lava like you it's just a screw the player moment, so I thought that was a little unfair. But other yeah, than that, I think I might have added it. Yeah. Other than that, I thought the the game was uh, the map was fantastic. You guys both did a great job, and uh, and uh, and congrats to being able to collaborate with somebody. I've never successfully been able to do it myself, but it looks like you guys did a pretty good job with this one. Yeah, thanks. I appreciate it. Yeah, one final note. I think the Void Lord must have been mine because I used the Void Lord in like Z Manzilla's uh, snapshot challenges. Yeah, I remember he was like a boss. So I think, yeah, I'm pretty sure I came up with the Void Lord being there. In all honesty, I don't remember exactly, but I definitely, I definitely edited it. I'm not sure if there was already a cat. No, there wasn't already a cat even there. But yeah, and as for collaboration, it's kind of a cop out because hey, we live in the same household. It's it's very easy for us to collab as a result. So you know, <laughs> which is great. But you know, not everyone gets the opportunity. We're who are into the same games. And, well, we're not all we're not into the same all the same games. We haven't been a lot of the same stuff. So yeah. All right then. So that was Snapcast episode five, Sandy Crater by Bloodshot Twelve, and our man Shades Master. So thank you, yeah. Spindle Shanks for joining us today thank you thank you for having me yep thank you justin glad you could be here hey no problem my guy thank you for having me as well thank you very much z manzilla ah uh, thank you as well and last but not least thank you very much uh shades man you know i know people are sometimes have weird feelings about uh being present while their own maps are being played but i really appreciate the sort of director commentary that we were able to get by having you here it was really uh insightful so thank you for being here thanks i appreciate it and again it's less weird because it's like only 10 percent my map you know but it's still partially my map at this point i guess so yeah all right so that was that's it that's snapcast episode five thanks for watching thanks for listening if you have a map you'd like to recommend for us to be uh featuring on the next episode Go ahead and leave that in the comments. Go ahead and like this video, too, uh, just so we get some kind of feedback as far as how many people are actually watching and enjoying these videos, you know, and it encourages us to keep making more of them, even though we have plenty of fun doing it. But uh, uh, feedback's always appreciated. And, uh, you know, there's still, more, there's still a few more slots on the old Snapcast roster, so, hey, if you think you got what it takes to be on the Snapcast team, you think you got what it takes... It takes a working microphone, okay? That's what it takes. So if you got that and you want to be part of the Snapcast, just let us know. We can get you in for the next episode. Uh, thanks for listening. Thanks for watching, everybody. Uh, Have a I great night. I test that that's optional. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It's got to work at least a little bit. <laughs> All right. Peace out, everybody.